Hi, Faisal Carmelli here with More Than Money, and we're doing a, a bit of a special kind of uh, presentation, an uh, interview today. Uh, we've got Scott uh, Antoniak. He is the CEO of Slate Real Estate Investment Trust, or better known as a REIT. Scott, thank you for coming. Thank you so much. So many people out there do not understand real estate investment trusts, or REITs as we call them. Let's start off with what is what does Slate do, and then let's kind of get into the details of uh, a REIT and the benefits of it. Sure. So Slate... Office REIT is a real estate investment trust, as you rightly point out. Uh, we have a portfolio of 38 assets in four uh, strategic markets or uh, geographic concentrations around North America, about 7.5 million square feet. Uh, it's traded on the TSX. We pay a monthly distribution to our unit holders of just inside 7% right now, uh, and that's at a 65% payout ratio, so durable and stable cash flow. And a real estate investment trust is really just a, a structure of ownership. Uh, for real estate assets. So um, our particular focus is office properties, but there are other retail that trade in the industrial and retail space. But it's a, for us, it's a source of you know, permanent public capital that we can access the market and grow our strategy. So real estate has been um, invested in multiple ways, like you just mentioned, residential, mm -hmm. commercial, so forth. Many Canadians are investing in real estate, either in their own principal residence, an investment property, um, even even the recreational properties. That's what they really know. Mm -hmm. So kind of give an explanation to, to our viewers and listeners about um, what's what's the benefits of a real estate investment trust and why go that route versus buying on your own? Sure. So I think one of the big benefits of a real estate investor trust is diversification. So you're getting scale. We have 38 assets. We have 7.5 million square feet. For an individual investor to do that on their own, it's a bit of a stretch. Yeah. Um, so we, we like the diversification piece of this with it because I said before that it's a permanent capital vehicle. And really the investment thesis is, you know, is there an opportunity for us to generate outsized returns for investors through a particular strategy? We think there's an opportunity in the office space in Canada and now North America to do just that, right? So our strategy is to buy uh, real office real estate at a compelling price okay. that has a story to it where we can add value for unit holders. So it's more than just... Uh, you know, coupon clipping on a monthly yield basis. It's more about adding value to that. Now, you know, those value add opportunities might come from, you know, um, less focused incumbent manager. So we buy from someone who isn't as focused on the assets as they should be, or there's a particular tenant dislocation or, or dynamic in a market where we think there's an opportunity to grow value over the longer term. So you're getting 7% or just under 7% to hold it with long-term upside. So 7% distribution, very difficult to receive on an individual basis, at least in this city. Um, and I'm assuming in other areas or markets that you're finding. So what's the process you guys go through to, to uncover those opportunities? So we have, you know, Slate Office Read is part of a global real estate platform uh, under the banner of Slate Asset Management. We have about six and a half billion of assets in multiple strategies around the globe. So we cast a fairly wide net. As I said, we believe that there was a, an opportunity in the North American office market. It's incumbent then on managers or our management team to go out and find where those opportunities are. So I mean, our biggest portfolio, our biggest concentration of assets is in and around Toronto, okay. suburban and urban there. The next biggest would be in Atlantic Canada. We bought a significant portfolio from Fortis, the utility company, uh, 11 assets, eight of which we continue to hold today. It's about 30% of our assets. Most recent acquisitions, and an example of kind of picking up that strategy and moving it, is we bought a million square feet in downtown Chicago. Really like the office market dynamic there. You can buy you know, real estate as significant discount to replacement cost. You know, we think stabilized yields there in the seven and a half to eight percent range, so pretty compelling from a valuation perspective. Where do you see the opportunities going for? I think they're extensive. I mean, as I said before, it's incumbent on us to uncover those. We like what we're seeing in Chicago. Uh, so, you know, the U.S. expansion was never meant to be at the exception or isolation of Canada, so we'll continue to you know continue to grow our assets in our, in our own home country. But uh, we like some of what's going on in the Midwest and some southeast markets in the United States. Um, as well as you know, uh, the GTA. So there's more opportunity in the U.S. than would you say in Canada at this point? I think for our specific strategy there is, but it's on a market-by-market -market basis. Great, yeah. great. So you mentioned Atlantic Canada. So many of these people are listening from Alberta mm -hmm. and are seeing that you're, you're looking at opportunities or have opportunities in Atlantic Canada. How, how big is your opportunities here in Alberta? So you know, with the volatility in the Alberta office market, both Calgary and Edmonton right now, the REIT structure, given that it pays a monthly distribution, uh, is not ideal at this point. We think there is a lot of value in Calgary and Edmonton office markets right now, but not for this particular type of structure. Yeah, you have another investment opportunities fund. Right, we have an opportunity fund yeah. that has a longer term view of the valuation horizon. The returns are higher in the longer run, not as focused on the month to month cash flow as the REIT would be. Very interesting. So two different strategies, one showing monthly cash flow. So those are 
approaching retirement, living retirement, looking for cash flow. Exactly. Slate would be a, a state REIT would be a good one. The opportunities fund is a bit more long term appreciation of capital. Correct. And so in that long term capital appreciation, you 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 see Calgary as an opportunity. And what I'm trying to get at is, is this city going to be able to to see value? We're going to see more money come in this because the price depreci depreciation, sure. or is there opportunity here now? Or would you rather put your capital somewhere else where you can see a better return on investment? Well, we, we think so. I mean, we have 14 assets in Calgary right now in that other strategy, yeah. the biggest being Stephen Avenue Place, where we're doing really exciting things on the repositioning. Um, you know, Slate has a long history in Calgary. Uh, in, in its infancy, the company owned six or seven assets here that were then sold into Dundee Reed on stabilization. Yeah. So we bought even some of those assets back at what we think is really compelling value. And we're big believers in Alberta in general and Calgary specifically over the longer term. So, you know, we wouldn't be here for 14 office assets if we didn't believe that. Fantastic. There are many um, politicians, uh, business owners, entrepreneurs who are looking at Calgary or are in Calgary as an area of opportunity. What would you give them as a piece of advice so that when they're looking at real estate, when they're looking at, at opportunities of growth, what would you need to see happen in Calgary to get investments away from the opportunities fund and get more into that? That stable distribution type of investment. Sure. So a longer term, we you know we need a return to stability on the occupancy side. So a little bit more occupancy, a little bit more um, lease duration. In Calgary is a cyclical place. This has happened before. You had a particularly good run up to this time longer. Uh, keep an eye on development. You don't want to have too much development, which then adds to supply, which you know creates con continued. You're trying to catch up on the occupancy side. You never can. I think diversification longer term. You know. Oil and gas is obviously always going to be a big part of Calgary, but you know, more diversification is better. Even just a story around that is helpful uh, for town. There's lots of smart people in Calgary, yeah. and there's good opportunities to grow. We've seen that in our Chicago investments. Um, dynamic things happening on the tech side there that most people don't know. Like with Amazon and Google and Uber, you think about the coasts with those tenants, but they're big players now in downtown Chicago. So things like that to you know, build on the base that's already here. Fantastic, fantastic. What do you see as the opportunities for the company? And for the North American economy, because one indication of how the economy is going is how, how real estate is doing as well. So what are your thoughts on both sides of the board? Do you see something that's one's outperforming the other over the next, let's say, call it five years that you'd, you'd like to put more of your guys' assets towards? Or is there opportunity in other places around the world that you're looking at? Uh, in the office vehicle, we'll stick to North America, I think, and, and it'll be you know, on a market-by-market -market basis. So. This was never particular, never based on a market call of a particular market, but it was on hiring us as prudent managers to go out and find opportunities wherever they may be. Uh, because of the scale of the broader slate platform, we see every office deal in Canada and a whole lot of them in the United States as well. So, um, you know, we can find opportunities and then go educate ourselves and get smart about a market like Chicago. We can do things on an outsized basis. And, you know, we do like clustering assets because we think there's real value in synergies and having multiple assets in a market where you can provide multiple solutions to tenants. Mm -hmm. um, but that said, you know, we don't know what the next Chicago will necessarily be or if we do maybe more assets there as well. There are um, investors who come in to invest in your, uh, your REIT or other investments that are, they think, short-term in mindset. You're getting a 7% distribution. Uh, that cash flow is coming on a monthly basis. What kind of expectations should the investor have for you? And what kind of expectations do you have for the investors that you would like to see investing in your company? So we want alignment. We want long-term owners who believe in the story. It's, you know, part, a large part of this is, is their view of management and our capability to source and create value in deals. We've done, you know, extens have an extensive track record of doing that, buying well, creating value, and then, you know, either financing and holding or, or selling assets. So I think alignment through, you know, the length of ownership is important. I think there are a few places in the investment market right now where you can get a 7% current pay on a monthly basis that's at a 65% payout ratio, so very secure and very durable with upside. You know, we're trading at about a 25 to 30% discount to net asset value right now, so we think that capital appreciation piece is a massive opportunity for investors over the long term. Why do you term. think you're getting, you're getting discounted to net asset value? So we reduced the distribution at the beginning of this year from uh, $0.75 cents to 40 retain more capital into the business that we can invest in opportunities where we think we can make outsized returns. So that money is not exiting the system. It's in the system being reinvested into existing assets and new assets. That's six months ago. We think there's a couple quarters of catching up from that because it is a retail story and retail is predominantly yield focused, but you know, you're still getting 7% with a lot of upside. Fantastic. I want to thank you for so much for coming out today. Thank you so much. Yeah.